In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As you can see, a great chasm has arisen between us. For your safety and for ours, um, some of our structural problems have been magnified this week. Not to our good, but they will be resolved by Tuesday, at which point we'll put it all back together. In our Gospel this morning, we're reminded there's a great chasm between people's response to the Kingdom of God and to God's invitation to that wedding banquet, and they just don't come. And then when they do come, eventually they're not quite ready. Let us pray that in this Mass we find ourselves ready to meet with God and to be partakers in his kingdom. And whatever space there is between us with one another, let us make sure that space is not between us and God, that we may be useful servants to the kingdom, that we might be good for God in the communities in which we live, in a world in need of God's love to be proclaimed. So you are safe here, not just physically in this building, but you are safe here with God, for God desires that we come close to him, and in being close to him, we know our joy. <coughs> junior disciples and diddy disciples, I don't know if we have any um, junior and diddy disciples this morning, but we give thanks for them and we pray God's blessing on them and our young people, if they'd like to go out. They don't have to, but if they'd like to. <laughs> and God bless you, Eden Shiloh, and Shiloh, um, and those who teach you. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, 
through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God, and I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure, 
for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding <coughs> banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed there a man who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? 
and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One of our young people, Eden, answered Father John's call to write about someone who had shown an inspiring contribution to black history. And the image on the front of the Mass booklet today shows the sculptress and teacher Augusta Savage, whom Eden chose for her project. Eden was inspired by Augusta's sheer determination. Augusta refused to give up on her gift for sculpture, despite as a child being thrashed regularly by her Methodist minister father, because he was horrified that she should want to make what he called graven images and idols. Savage finally became a pioneer for young artists in New York, working with others to create what became known as the Harlem Renaissance. The picture you see is of Augusta in her study, working on a commission for the World Fair of 1939 in New York. It was designed to celebrate the contribution made by African Americans to the nation's musical life and Augusta wanted to depict the immense legacy made by Negro spirituals and hymns with a work entitled The Harp. She found inspiration in a poem by James Weldon Johnson, Lift Every Voice and Sing. This poem he originally wrote in 1900 to celebrate Lincoln's birthday. It was set to music by his brother, and it became part and parcel of the school repertoire for black children in their schools in Jacksonville, where Johnson and Savith both grew up. Later, it was sung across the southern states by children in what were then, of course, segregated schools. Augusta spent almost two years completing this 16-foot sculpture. At the fair, it received much acclaim. It depicts a group of 12 stylized black singers in graduated heights, symbolizing the strings of the harp. The sounding board is formed by the arm and the hand of God. A kneeling man holding music represents the foot pedal. Sadly, after the fair closed, all the artwork was destroyed, including the harp. Augusta wanted to represent the undying hope of the African-American slaves and their descendants as they faced what the poem calls the dark past. In the days when hope unborn had died, until our weary feet came to the place for which our fathers sighed, over a way that with tears was watered. This prayer poem ends with a plea to God that he keeps his people in the path that leads to light, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. It is this determination, then, that Eden saw in Augusta, and which in turn Augusta would remember from the spirituals her people had always sung to comfort and encourage themselves. Often these songs picked up the longings and the sighs of the people of God in Israel when they were in exile and slavery, songs from the Psalms and the prophets. And I don't think I'm wrong in thinking that this image of the harp harks back to Psalm 137. The Babylons, for whatever reason, asked the Israelites to sing one of their native songs. The exiles answer, 
How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We have hung up our harps on the willows by the waters of Babylon. The timing for singing is over. Babylon is, of course, the name often used in black communities to describe the powers that be who still oppress and marginalise and discriminate. But there is still singing. The psalm goes on, If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand lose its cunning. The harps have to be taken off the trees and played again. Isaiah, too, in this morning's first lesson, is singing. It's almost as if the joyful banquet of God's kingdom has already arrived. He talks about the city of chaos. He's already mentioned it, Babylon, an image of all that is corrupt and evil, which now God will destroy. He himself will be the shelter and refuge from the storms of life. And now, not only for his people Israel, but for all who are poor and needy, protecting those who cannot protect themselves. This banquet is for all comers, unlike the banquets of earthly rulers for which only the privileged will get an invitation. Slaves, of course, were usually forbidden to dance or to drum or congregate. They would meet secretly, often by a river, to support one another, learn to read, pray, to sing. Like Isaiah, nothing was going to silence them in their determination to survive and to change the circumstances with the help of God. They determined to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. It is this vision of the heavenly banquet that Jesus is placing before his listeners in this morning's gospel. It's a parable that we find both in Luke and Matthew, but their versions differ quite a lot. Each evangelist is addressing their own particular circumstances and their own particular congregation. Luke speaks of a posh but everyday wedding feast, but Matthew, rather clumsily, makes it into a royal banquet. Both of them need to manage the fact that Israel has rejected their Messiah. The church is increasingly made up of Gentiles, many of whom are new to the values and aspirations of the kingdom, which Paul is commending to the church in Philippi. Jesus always sees God's judgment and our response as something very immediate in the present, very much about making decisions, performing actions in the present moment, not in the future. The kingdom of God arrives today or nowhere. The early church, of course, expected judgment day would be just around the corner, but when it didn't happen, they had to deal with the uncomfortable fact that while some were living out a daily, immediate practice of faith, others seemed to use the time of waiting as an opportunity for delaying any attempt to build lives of holiness. And so Matthew is very impatient for discipline within his own congregation. An elderly priest once said to me, never scold the flock, it doesn't work, and it doesn't. But for him, to delay right living will mean coming to a very sticky end. Luke, on the other hand, wants us to realise that once Israel has rejected its Messiah, the way lies open for the good news of the kingdom to be extended to the whole world. Matthew reworks the story and he adds a second layer of unexpected guests, commoners, outside the usual royal social circle and latecomers. The king, in his generosity, makes every effort to welcome some very unlikely guests. But even then, this ragtag and bobtail bunch includes some people who have made no effort to dress properly. Matthew is speaking within an historical context and a very different church setting. And he wants his congregation to realize that as the prospect of Judgment Day and the final banquet of the kingdom recede into an ever more unpredictable future, the present company will need to face the fact that they are a mixed bunch and some of them need to be more organised. We need to retrace our steps to explore that spontaneous reaction that Jesus wanted to create in the story. 
Jesus is constantly breaking down that demarcation between the righteous and the sinful. Why else at the Last Supper does he say that the banquet of God's love is not just for the few, but for the many? He uses calculated stories to play with our sense of order and values. And he calls us to venture further than we ever imagined into the ways that we relate and care for the world and for each other. It is a path that the focus of this Black History Month underlines for us. Jesus' concern is always for the many and not for the few. So in this tale, the landowner, or the king in Matthew's version, goes out of his way to invite all comers to the banquet to sit down and feast together, irrespective of their former wealth or social status. Things will have to change. We have to change. It is this model of equality and openness that we see the early church struggling to maintain as they meet each week for the Eucharist. And it is this open, generous way of celebrating the Mass and our communal life that we are called to today. Bringing in the kingdom, redeeming the time, simply going about the business of making life better for others and for ourselves will involve us in a process. The work will call on our wit and wisdom as much as our desire to be helpful to one another. But it will also call into question our values and our presuppositions about other people. This process, if we're honest, is going to lay bare our soul. There is a road to travel and a cost to be paid for our engagement with others if our relationship with each other is to be genuine. And then we shall begin to sing from the same song sheet. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, promise that you will hear us when we pray to you in faith. Receive these prayers we offer. Eternal Father, who provides all things, we pray for the welfare of your church here on earth. Guide and govern it by your Spirit, so that all who call themselves Christian may be led in the way of truth and peace. We pray for Christopher, our Bishop, Justin, our Archbishop, Jonathan, Bishop of Croydon, and all your clergy here at St John's. And as we celebrate Black History this month, help us all to value and respect the diversity of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Heavenly King, we pray for the leaders of the world and in all in positions of power. Give wisdom to them and all of those in authority. Give them a desire for righteousness and peace so that they work together in truth to seek the common good and to share with justice the resources of the earth. We pray for all families in our parish and all who live and work at Evolve Housing. Pour your grace into their hearts so that they feel your love and support and it engulfs them forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. We pray for all places in the world that suffer from war or conflict. We pray for the refugee and the homeless and all who have no safe place to go. We pray for all countries affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and for all doctors and nurses and for all of those who support them. Give them strength and courage to endure what they must with a knowledge of your love and a hope for a better future. Gracious God, inspire us also to help where we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, we pray for those who suffer with any need, in mind, body or spirit, especially the sick and those who care for them. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Roy Ray, Robbie Middleton, Christopher Love, David Odenji, Lorna Gautier, Amanda Smith, Pamela Morris, David Maitland, Simon Gabe, Michael Hale, Vanette and Mike Melbourne, Michael Cooper, Adam Phillips, Peter Bibby, Janet Kempson, Philippa Pierce, Alison Amelia, Julie Lowe, Anne Newman, Naomi Ayanu, Alan Dreger, June McCullen, Carmen Alvarez, Paul Allen, and Poe Wong. Comfort and heal them, merciful Father. Enable them to feel you close and bring them and us all into the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We are thankful to you, Lord God, and grateful for your faithful servants in every age. Give hope and faith to the dying, comfort the bereaved, and give gentleness to those who administer to them. We remember those who have recently departed. Jack Bridge, Margaret Morris, Phyllis Simmons, Andy Davies, Paul Johnson, Joseph Hogan, and Terry Paxton. We also remember past priests, benefactors, friends, 
and all whose year's mind occurs this week. Alfred Eyre, Zelina Rice, Stanley Hortin, Caroline Ellis, George Geel, Lucy Bucknell, Nelly Cooper, Edith Miller, Arthur Shudlam, Dorothy Endenes, and Tom Everett. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and, and let the light perpetual, perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. These prayers we offer with those of Our Lady Mary, St John our Patron, and all the saints as we commend before God the needs of the entire creation. That God's kingdom may be built and established more fully in this generation, we pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. You will notice that our offertory hymn is that poem that Father Andrew referenced in his sermon. So um, it's a new one for us all. I'm sure you'll try your best. But first the peace, the peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of socially distanced peace.
accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and joy in their unending song of praise. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, 
and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady Mary, Saint John our patron, Saint Alban the martyr and all the saints, they praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given. When we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Singing that hymn so well. That was very well done. We must have it again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ as Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you upon those we love and those we ought to love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. It is let us be according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, for thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And of course, as we remember, Mother and Mary is brought to mind, of course, that tomorrow um, we have Paul Johnson's funeral. And Mary, our friends with you, and Julia also, Paul's wife and family, that um, our love comes to you in this time. And I know many of you will be able to be there, but we remember none of this.
I can't see. No. 